All right, guys, we're going to do a little podcast here. Uh, We're going to do, this will be our first podcast. Basically, we're going to talk about things in movies. Um, And for our first podcast, we're basically going to talk about multi-part movies and our thoughts on multi-part movies. So, Aiden, what are your thoughts on multi-part movies? Um, Well, multi-part movies started with... uh the seventh Harry Potter movie, and they've been appearing more and more frequently, and I hate it. I really don't like the trend of splitting movies into two parts when it's not necessary at all. Well, it's very common um, in, like, adaptions, for example, but we're starting to see it leak over more in not just these um, novel adaptions, but uh, we're starting to see them more in other things, like... um, Avengers 3, for example, is two parts. I don't know how they're going to do that or what they're doing there, but uh, that's a good example of a two-part movie that was not initially two parts. So the question is, why do you think studios do multi-part movies, and should they continue multi-part movies? Well, it's pretty obvious that the, the major reason that it's done is because it makes a dick load of money. Uh, the first one um, that really started this trend was Harry Potter 7, which may have been the most unnecessary one ever. Uh, Harry Potter 7 was not an incredibly long book anyway. Yeah, wasn't it shorter than... I don't, I don't know. It was shorter short than a few of the others. But I but felt like it was, yeah, it was one of the shorter of the later movies or books. And it kind of, the story of Harry Potter 7 Part 1 kind of cuts off right in the middle. I don't remember exactly how it ended. Uh, um, actually, uh, after Part 1, we see Voldemort w- raise his wand in the air. But I think that brings up a decent point. When you watch that movie, you figure at first, oh, it's because fans are like, I want to see everything. Um, but even with the two-part movie, I felt like they left a lot out compared to the books. And honestly, I don't read many books, but... Uh, I did read the seventh Harry Potter, and I know they left out a lot of major points. Like, one of Ron's brothers died, one of the twin ones, I believe. Um, And they don't even mention it in the movie. Like, they kind of show it in a montage, but I just thought that movie was kind of uneventful and unnecessary. Another great example, of course, I think the um, the be-all, end-all example of where this is starting to get ridiculous is The Hobbit. The oh, three-part yeah. movie. Um, based on a 180-page pre- yeah, book. basically the prequel of the Lord of the Rings. And, um, yeah, I could compare it to a lot of bad prequels from before. I'm not going to go into that too much, but um, that was shorter than any of the Lord of the Rings books, I believe. And yep. all of those movies were done extremely well in one-part movies. And The Hobbit was broken into three. So... Uh, I think that's a pretty good example. I thought those Hobbit movies were really dry and just excuses for money. Um, One of the bad trends in these multi-part movies, I think one of the biggest crimes with these multi-part movies, especially uh, look at the end of Hobbit Part 2. It looks like there's going to be a big thing with Smog, and that's going to be almost half of the next movie. Uh, They actually end up killing Smog in the first five minutes of The Hobbit, probably. Yeah, they leave you with an intentional cliffhanger, so you have to come back. Yeah. It works in a serialized medium like um, like a tel- like television, but uh, in a story, in movies, since the beginning of movie making, pretty much, it's all been done consecutively into one part. If we did have uh, a multi-part movie, or what we call a multi-part uh, series, it would be something like Star Wars, where the narrative continues over, you know, they don't defeat Darth Vader right away, but there is an ending to that, you see the Death Star get destroyed, uh, there's resolution to each film that makes it feel like it's three stories set in the same, yeah. even with, like, the Star Wars prequels and stuff, which are universally panned, we do see an ending to those, you know, Darth Maul dies, um, the Jedi destroy, or make big progress against the droids. There's a, uh, uh, the Geonosis the plot is done in the second movie. Uh, and in the third movie, it's the fall of the Jedi. So even that, you see some progress there. But in the Hobbit and stuff, you're seeing one part of an act, and you're ending up paying, if you're paying a ticket price of 8 bucks, you're paying 24 bucks to see the three movies. 
and that's just ridiculous because you're really getting one movie of content stretched over with a bunch of boring, useless content in between. Another big problem with these two-part movies is that they're only they're making a, a what would be a three-hour movie into two an hour and a half movies, or two, and, two uh, hour movies or whatever. You know, three hours is a little bit long. But, but I think could, people would be more than willing to, you know, it's not like it's the longest movie ever made if it's three hours. Yeah. There are movies that come out that are three hours. I noticed a lot of books, like like the Twilight, I believe, did it. Um, what we have, uh, Twilight, yeah, Twilight, whatever. Hunger Four. Games. These movies, they're just they're shooting themselves in the foot because right now it's like we're gonna make this much money in the box office. Let's say. Uh, each Hunger Games makes $200 million, well, that's $400 million in their pocket, but then you have the problem, A, eventually consumers are going to be smart enough that they're like, okay, I'm not going to Hopefully. waste money on seeing two parts of this movie, I don't care enough, um, but like, especially like Hunger Games and stuff, and even The Hobbit, The Hobbit should have been a perfectly memorable uh, movie, The Lord of the Rings, hugely memorable People are going to love those movies. They're going to be held up there um, at all time, or in all movie history, as a great trilogy. However, The Hobbit, I couldn't tell you um, anything about The Hobbit, like, individually, except in Part 3 they pissed me off because they killed Smog at the way end. You can't get these memorable moments when you're not getting a full story, you know what I'm saying? Like, like in the future, people aren't going to be like really the best Hunger Games movie was Hunger Games Mockingbird Part 3 of 15. Because it's stupid and confusing. You're losing some memorability through the movie. Like, you know what I'm saying? Especially with these movies being completely worthless. I remember most movies I've seen in recent times, but then I think about movies like, like, uh, I guess Hunger Games is a great example repeatedly. Uh, Hunger Games Part 1. I could probably tell you a decent plot of the first Hunger Games. I never saw the second one, but part one of episode three, I could probably no tell you. Like, I remember she did some stuff. She never really fought anyone. It was just all pointless garbage. There was no conflict. We she sings a song. We got to that point reason. in the conflict, you know? Like, like, I feel like a story should be beginning, middle, and end. And I don't think dividing it into two or three movies is really helping me. Like... Um, if this trend continues, I think it's going to be really hard. I hope, I hope like Avengers 3, and that just sounds ridiculous, Avengers 3 Part 1, why couldn't it just be Avengers 4? Like, I understand they're trying to do one villain, but I hope what they do is they resolve the story uh, with at least, like, if they do that, I hope, like, the Avengers are defeated or something, maybe it's looking bad for Earth, and then Part 2, uh, they kind of work together to fix, fix what's been it's happening and stuff. It's kind of jarring because there is a traditional story structure, and that's there's a there's an intro, there's the middle where basically in the middle things go to shit, and then there's a third part, the conclusion where everything gets wrapped up. Um, and in the first, in like in Star Wars, the original trilogy, in the first movie or in Episode Four, the story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Uh, Luke. Luke sets out on his journey, uh, he gets to the Death Star and watches uh, Obi-Wan die, and then at the end they destroy the Death Star. That's a complete story, but in the overall story of the three movies, you also have the whole plot about taking down the Empire, and each movie itself serves as a piece of that. With two-part movies, essentially you either have to... Uh, end after the first part, or end after the second part, which means the third part is either all the action and then the ending, or the third part is just the ending. Yeah. No, like, especially, like, um, what, I, what was the third, uh, Hobbit movie? Battle of Five Arms. Yeah, they removed any real, and I fell asleep during that movie, and I never plan on seeing it again, so I don't fully remember everything, but I do remember basically when I went to sleep it was some big action sequence, and to my knowledge, it's like everything was set up before, so we're just gonna have a two and a half hour battle sequence. Like, it was pointless, and it was based on, what, a page of the actual story where they said there was yeah, a war? Yeah, the... I don't know. The incredibly... The whole battle of five armies is more or less... 
you know, non-existent in the book. Um, yeah, it's the, and the second Hobbit, as mentioned before, is incredibly offensive, because instead of getting its own ending, it's like, oh, the, the dragon is yeah. flying out. No, and it's then, hard. Yeah, I keep going, I'm sorry. And then, uh, they're like, oh, if you want to see how the dragon dies, you're going to have to see the next movie. And then the dragon dies in five minutes, and a bunch of shit that you don't care about that wasn't really in the book happens, and they go to the dumb, uh, Gandalf is doing some shit with the necromancer, yeah. and they added in all these stupid characters, like Legolas comes back, even though he wasn't in the book, and the, the, yeah, the lady is added in. Shit. It's just, they Enough, just shove garbage yeah. in there to make it longer so they can split it up and make more money. Like, it's obviously a money-making ploy, a lot of that movie. The thing I really want to point out is, like you said, um, Smog gets killed in the first five minutes. Uh, I would even have an easier time believing that the m movie wasn't just a money grab if they um, if they ended the second movie and they kind of were like, okay, now there's still more to come. Because that way it would almost seem like, like you know, um, a normal structure like Empire Strikes Back or something like that where... Um, even though it is the middle and there's more to come, it has an ending, it has a definitive ending, and I know we're comparing to Star Wars a lot, but, and I want to pick on Hobbit for a second here, because, um, this is proof that a lot of these multi-parts are just cash grabs. The Hobbit was a huge cash grab. I, it's hard to say otherwise. Um, for example, the ingenuity of all, like, the, uh, of all of the original, uh, Lord of the Rings movies. A lot of practical effects, a lot of extras, a lot of hard work. This, like, you look at some footage and it looks like Orlando Bloom standing on a, a green brick with people in weird green gimp suits jumping around him. It's just, it just seems like a huge cash grab, the whole production. And um, these movies are just, basically, I hear part one, part two, and I just see, oh, they're making a cash grab movie. It makes it hard for me to even invest in the movies right away because I go in feeling like I'm not going to know what's going to happen at the end. I'm not going to be able to invest in these characters, you know? It's just I'm paying to see the first half of a movie. They're grabbing cash out of your wallet. You know? Not only that, but they intentionally... They usually film both parts at the same yeah. time, but then wait a year between release. This allows them to release the DVD before releasing the next part oh, because yeah. you're so like, people, oh shit, I don't remember anything so they're getting that happened at least in the last a rental. movie. Yeah. So they either rent or buy the movie. See, and number two, I feel like I rented. I don't know if it was Redbox, Ultraviolet, whatever, but I did rent Hobbit Part One before I saw Hobbit Part Two because I was so uninvested in the movie, I forgot what happened. I'm like, it was probably good. It was Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings type movie, so I was good with watching it. And then I watched it, and I was like, oh. I guess the part two is going to make it a lot better for me. And then I watched part two and it just wasn't. Like, especially, I bet you The Hobbit, if I took the footage, or someone who was uh, probably a more competent editor than me, <laughs> uh, took the footage, they could easily edit together um, one or two part movie that's as equal amount of value to that movie. Or then um, I get it just as much out of. Like, like a lot of those two part movies. Like, the Hunger Games, I guarantee you, nothing happened in part one. You could probably cut that down to 40 minutes. So, I guarantee you, in a movie under two hours, or under two and a half hours, you could probably make Hunger Games part three uh, and get out everything that anyone's going to take from it and put it into a movie. It's incredibly difficult to remember what happened in a story when the story is never finished. Like, 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 uh, Harry Potter... 7 part 1 some stuff happens and then in Harry Potter 7 part 2 you're like oh yeah and then Voldemort dies so, spoilers on a 6 7 year old movie based on a 9 year old, 7 year old movie are you shitting me dude oh, fuck it wasn't that long ago was it it was like 2011 or 12 I think I don't know well whatever I, it was like a few years old whatever uh the point is it's impossible almost to remember what happened in the first half because there's nothing because nothing noteworthy really happens in the first part or the second part of the movie. Well, even Harry Potter, like when they were kind of getting the idea out there, I think they were like, okay, we'll put everything in there. And I think they put too many, um, too much into the first half. It was so saturated because things did happen. I did remember the first half. Um, 
Because they went around and, especially that story, what, they had to get the seven mystic objects or whatever? The, the, six the of them three uh, things. I oh, thought yeah, it was kind of a horcruxes. stupid plot to the end of the book, because they're like, oh yeah, you didn't know about these horcruxes, that you could, whatever. But, I mean, at least they made progress with the story. When you saw seven part one, that one wasn't even too disappointing. I never saw Twilight, but I mean, as these movies came out, there were more and more like, hey... The thing that Harry Potter did worked, and Harry Potter did it better than most. I mean, I thought part two was kind of like, like they pushed so much into part one, and they were like, whoops, and then they brought out part two, and it kind of fell short. Um, Another, but uh, I mean, I would say that one did it the best. Like, you look at The Hobbit, and like, uh, people were defending that movie, and I know we're going to look back in that movie, and it's not that much talked about right now, but I know in a couple of years when people kind of like come to their senses i don't even think the general public is going to enjoy that much if like if you really think about the business tactics they did it's kind of disgusting to think that that's what they want to do with their movie like and in that sense i would say even the star wars prequels are better than the hobbit maybe not from an enjoyment aspect but at least you're getting a whole story it's memorable and even though george lucas did a cash in i mean you can't say Peter Jackson was trying to cash in less than George Lucas. And for that, I say that, and I mean this 100% honestly, you can challenge me on it or whatever, but I say that the Star Wars prequels are better than The Hobbit, to be honest. Because at least you get a full story, and you're not just getting fucking cheated out of money. Another one, I know we brought this up already. Yeah. And I'm, I'm definitely not a Hunger Games authority. I barely remember the first one, but yeah. I'm, we didn't Kids see the second one. Other. No. But in the third one, we saw the first part of the third one. Is the second part out? No, uh, no so. the, the third part just came out in, like, January or December or something. Okay, whatever. We went we went and saw it. It was the one where she... In that movie, nothing. literally, I can't remember Wasn't there, like, like, a bunch of stock footage or something? Or what we presume was stock footage? Because she had, like, a bunch of dream... Like, like they nightmares. explained... They spent the first, like, 15 minutes explaining the other movies. They're like, she shot an arrow at the invisible wall, and they yeah. got to wherever. Yeah. And then they stand around talking, and she sings a song, and they go to places that were destroyed, and the evil guy makes evil faces and does comic comically evil things, like, like blow up... The orphanages. Yeah, because she visited the orphanage and they blew it up. But I don't think our characters even came into conflict at all. Like I, there was I, no action in she's an like, action. I feel movie. bad. No, like we're supposed to care about. I don't know what Hunger Games is supposed to be. If it's supposed to be an action or drama, I don't think it really has a much of a much of a anything. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. It's like, there's a point where you might as well just read the book. Because honestly, I think I could probably read the Hobbit book twice in the time it takes to watch the three movies. Because oh, it's, yeah, you... it's not a hard read, right? It's basically no. a children's novel. Made, More or less, yeah. Made back in the day. Kind of a fun story. It's supposed to be like a traditional fairy tale. That was the idea. It was written as a bedtime story for yeah. Tolkien's kid. And that's also why it doesn't go into a lot of detail. And Peter Jackson attempted to expand on the details and ended up making the Battle of Five Armies. Yeah, well, I feel like the only things I really remember is Darth Insanius with the or which was the the, the orc uh, who wasn't not in the, the book. orc guy. He was the oh. wolf. He was the edgy wolf with the one arm, you know, like the wolf orc, you know. Yeah, the he Plato looked like orc. he kind of yeah the one that looked like like a Plato dwarf. Or a Plato wolf that was called an orc and had one arm. That ridiculous guy. I remember Bilbo. I remember Gandalf did some stupid shit and became CGI with Christopher Lee. And I remember um, the retarded Hobbit. That is all I remember from that movie. Yeah, there. You know which one I'm talking about if you saw the movie or if you saw any pictures. You of would the just movie. have to see a picture to know, cause cause he looks like he has Down syndrome, and I don't mean that in an offensive way. I don't know. It, in the end, the movie, not much... Ooh, I also remember the one was greedy. What other two-part movies were there? There was Twilight, which I never saw. Twilight, Harry Potter, Hunger Games, um, Avengers is coming out, we had Hobbit. Oh, yeah, Avengers, that's gonna be... Oh, I think that's basically it, right? There's more, probably. 
Yeah, I feel like... No, I don't know. Basically, it's just people aren't finishing their movies intentionally so that they can make more money. Yep. Well, I mean, we've beat a horse to death. I don't know. Do you have any other thoughts on this? Um... If you ever become a director, kids, remember to finish your movies. Clean your plate. That's it. In a side announcement, the movie we are creating ourselves, Butch Nitro, will be a 32-part film.